Got another one for you. Yeah, all right, fine. So now what are we doing? We're integrating some rational expressions. I hope to have another one after this for you also. Here, man, I wanna show you some tricks, see? Here over here, my numerator and my denominator are the same degree. Um, left over on the left side here. All right, we wanna integrate that. So you're like, maybe it's a little u sub. And I'm like, um, no, sir, right? Because if you let that be u, then du is going to be dx. And you still have that x on top. And the other way around, too. Can I show you a slick trick? What if we take that guy and we add nothing to it? Yeah, there's nothing to it. If I take that guy, x over x minus 6, and I subtract a 6 and add a 6, can I do that? Yeah, I'm not changing a dang thing. I'm adding zero. So now I have a fraction in the num or I have multiple terms in the numerator and I can split those two. I can split this into the integral x minus six over x minus six plus six over x minus six dx. Yeah, what's that? It's a lovely one. Great. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna rewrite that. The integral of one over x, oh, that's gone now. Dx plus six. I pass that six out of my integral. And then on the, oh, on the inside, I have one over x minus six dx. Now that sounds lovely. Here, here, I'm gonna let my denominator be u. So then here, I'm gonna let u equal x minus six. In doing that, du is equal to dx. So then I have the situation of du over u, which you know to integrate to the natural log. So then here, this is x plus six times the natural log of the absolute value of u. But what was u? It was x minus six. Now I know I'm stepping some skips, but um, this stuff is well before this stuff. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my c, t he, t he. So how does that integrate? Just like this. A separation of flower. Now that was when the numerator and denominator had the same degree. All right, um, here they both happen to be linear factors and I'm gonna you know, work on that. Over here, I have a little bit more trouble in this situation. Perhaps you remember the form for this Maybe you don't. Let's go through and integrate this. My denominator has a big degree, bigger degree than my numerator. So I'm going to attempt to perform some partial fractions. The reason I want to do this is so that I can separate it up into factors where I have linear denominators. And if I do that, then I have a situation where I can go log in. So I'm doing that. Um, there is a form, but I'm not one that's good with the memory. I gotta, you know, use some techniques. This is one over, that's the difference of squares. X plus one, X minus one, fun, DX. Now what I'm going to attempt to do over here on the side. On the side, I wanna perform a operation called partial fractions. Love it. So then, maybe a third and blue. 1 over x plus 1, x minus 1. It's my intention to rewrite this as a two fractions instead of one. I'm going to unadd these fractions. At least I hope so. So what I need to do is I need to multiply that guy out. Zip, zap, zo. Thank you, Mr. Emery. A times x minus 1 plus b times x plus 1 all over x plus 1 x 
it's mine. It's mine. If I ooh, ooh, distribute through, gather, collect, and combine, then I'm going to see I have A plus B times X. Now at home, you need to actually do that. All right? Right now, you're going to be like, yeah, just get this down. But come on now. Distribute, distribute, distribute. Uh-huh. Gather, collect, combine X values. Sure. So you're going to have A plus BX plus B minus A. Okay. Try it. Just try it. X plus 1 times X minus 1. All right. Far out. For these two fractions to be equal, the coefficients on their terms have to be equal. So here we see 0 times X plus 1. That was my original. Uh-huh. And then that says a plus b is equal to zero, the coefficient on the x, and b minus a is equal to one. Fine. So then what do you want to do there? Elimination? All right, all right. I'm going to take this guy, write it right on down there. So then I got a minus a plus b is one. So now we add them. Uh-huh. 2b is one, and b is half. So then I can go throw those up into one of the originals, and I'm also going to get that A is the opposite of B, or minus one half. How's it looking? Did I goof? Perhaps, but I'm going to keep going. So I can rewrite that guy, being that I know that that fraction is what it is. Here, wherever I see an A, I can put minus one half, and where I see a B, I put one half. So, back to black. This is going to be the same integral as... Oh, I'm just going to remember the form. You should know where it comes from, so that you could be more robust in your integration. Um, a is minus one half over x plus one plus one half over x minus one dx. All right, great. I got a half in each term. I'm going to pull it out. All right, don't mind me. So then there's a half on the outside. And then the integral, I'm also gonna switch these two so that I have one over x minus one minus one over x plus one dx. And remember, this is a video, you can pause it so you can work it out and check me. Okay, so now I need to integrate each one of these guys. So in the spirit of this guy, I'm going to let u be the denominator. Then du is going to be dx. And then I'm going to be integrating du over u. And then in both those situations, you get the natural log. All right. So this is 1 half. Yeah. The natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1. Uh-huh minus the natural log. Why the minus? Because it's there. Absolute value of x plus 1. Yeah. And then I'm going to add my c plus c. Now I can use some properties of logarithms. And I can add them. Yeah. So this is 1 over 2 times the natural log of the difference of those absolute values. x minus one over x plus one. Fun. Plus c, t he, t he. That box and those flowers. Yeah.